Hi, everyone. This is Dan, audio engineer of the Art of Costume blogcast. We wanted to take a moment to thank you for listening and all of the support, reviews, and messages you've given us so far. I'd like to also let you know, if you're interested in supporting the show, you can now head over to patreon.com slash theartofcostume. Your support there would be greatly appreciated and would help us continue to run the podcast, create quality content for you, and bring light to the world of costume design. For our patrons, we'll be posting highlights, funny moments, and even unheard bloopers. We'll also be posting additional episodes just for Patreon. So once again, make sure to check out patreon.com slash theartofcostume for full details. You can also support us by heading to theartofcostume.com slash podstore. There you can buy an awesome blogcast shirt, print, coffee mug, and a whole host of other possibilities from TeePublic. Thank you for all you do, and enjoy the show. Well, that soup looked nasty. That soup looked nasty. (laughs) And it's like the fact that her dress and the soup were the same color. I was like, I'm very uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) That visually, that made me extremely uncomfortable. (laughs) That her dress and the soup were the same color. I'm like, she's eating her clothes. I don't like this. Hello and welcome to the Art of Costume Blogcast. I'm Elizabeth Joy Glass. And I'm Spencer Williams. Elizabeth, what's up? What's up? Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, Happy New Year and Happy Season 2. Happy Season 2. I can't believe we made it. I can't believe it either. I feel like I haven't talked to you in a long time or seen you. Like we talk all the time and then suddenly we were both just like... I'm going to bed for two weeks. Do not talk to me. Literally, like, I think I hibernated for a couple (laughs) weeks. I, like, didn't see people. I didn't talk to people. I didn't do the work I should have. I literally, like, I played Stardew Valley and I watched stuff. That's all I did. Stardew Valley and I got really acquainted over the past break, however long we've been off. I don't even know how long we've been off. It feels like a year, but it's probably been, like, a month. It's been like two months, actually. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, maybe, maybe just a month. When did we record Gucci? That was, I don't know. Oh, it was like Thanksgiving-ish. I think it was like the first or second of December. So, yeah, it's been like a month and a half. Yeah, that's a long time. It's a very long so time. So, what did, what did you do during break besides hibernate and play Stardew Valley, which is basically what I did? <laughs> um that i did that that was very important um i went to maine and visited my sister we stayed in a little lake house which was Ooh. lovely i didn't go outside for like 72 hours it was great <laughs> goes to a lake house doesn't go outside <laughs> no well because it's like it's very snowy up there it's maine right they already have a bunch of snow and then it kept raining <laughs> oh man so we like couldn't we did a puzzle which was nice. Oh, that's fun. A puzzle's always nice. Kind of. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was a puzzle of like different landmarks around the world in like all these little like different squares. Ooh, this sounds spicy. And the picture on the box didn't show the entire. It, you know how it usually shows what it's going to look like when it's done? Kind of. I mean, I haven't done a puzzle since I was like four. Yeah, it doesn't show that. <laughs> so you just were making it up. <laughs> so it had some of it, but not all of it. So it was two days of confusion for me and my sister and mother. Everyone knows you're supposed to start with the outside of the puzzle and then you work your way from the outside in. Well, so the thing is... Because <laughs> I'm a puzzle expert suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> Those years as a toddler, you really just, you played the game. (laughs) No, so my sister had already started it. And like, I guess apparently there are puzzle mats and you can like start a puzzle, roll it up and like transport it. Right, right. So apparently my sister's... Which I don't trust, by the way. That just doesn't sound like 
gravity works that way. <laughs> exactly. So listen to this. <laughs> so my sister's fiance didn't roll it up tight enough. Oh. So it was like destroyed what she'd already worked on. Nice. We kept blaming him for our troubles, which was enjoyable. <laughs> well, next time you come over, I have a Game of Thrones puzzle that I've never <gasps> touched. Yes. And it has like the little buildings you put on it and stuff. And then I have even better. I have a Jersey Shore puzzle from season three of Jersey Shore that I've been waiting for a good time to pull it out. So, okay. <laughs> you don't sound as excited about that one. I have not seen a single episode of Jersey Shore in my life. Oh my God. Come on. I wasn't allowed to watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I was not allowed to watch growing up. I watched everything growing up. That's why I'm so messed up. It it was like trashy TV was like a no-no. Lost was fine. That was okay. <laughs> <laughs> but not Kardashians or Jersey Shore. Over break, um, I traveled to see my dad and stepmom in Iowa. Oh, that's right. How was that? I actually had so much fun. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did because I'm like, what do you do in Iowa? Yeah. And they have a new house and it's by a huge pond. We went kayaking. Like you could go kayaking Ooh, in his backyard, which is insane. That's... There was bald eagles flying around. There was, uh, we were driving ATVs around the property. I was reading a book. <laughs> you, know? you were reading a book? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Dune, so it's not like... oh. I'm not reading something philosophical, you know. But you like had time. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's it was, impressive. <laughs> it was awesome. And I watched so much TV, so many movies. Um, I did a lot of great like interviews. For example, I interviewed a costume designer named Edward who did The Lost Daughter with Olivia Coleman. Oh, right. That movie rocked. Um, I did an interview with the costume designer from Lucifer, mm -hmm. Cowboy Bebop. Which, uh, you know, that's the Netflix show that already got canceled, but the first season was so freaking good and Netflix should be ashamed of themselves. I know. I don't understand it. I don't know. And I, yeah, I watched a lot of TV. We watched a couple shows that we're going to talk about in the podcast in a few episodes. One up, one show in particular, you know what I'm talking about, that was very long, but I ended up <laughs> <laughs> really liking it. Yes, <laughs> yes. We should probably tell them to watch it soon so they could get started. But um, So yeah, I just watched a lot of TV, played a lot of video games. I got the new Guardians of the Galaxy video game. I'm really in my Marvel phase right now after watching Spider-Man. I just... All I think about is Marvel. Oh, Spider-Man was so good. It was so good. It it's almost like when I talk about it, it makes me depressed because I loved it so much, but also it really hurt all my feels. Like it did Andrew Garfield the whole time. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, also, if you haven't seen Spider-Man, <laughs> this is your spoiler warning. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm sure the internet has already spoiled that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are in it. Yeah. I went the night it came out. I, it wasn't even nighttime yet. Like the sun was still up. <laughs> it was like, let me in before I get spoiled. <laughs> no, we went Christmas Day. I ended up seeing three movies over Christmas weekend. Ooh. It was insane. It was so nice. I saw Encanto, Spider Man, oh. Nightmare Alley. I was like using that Regal movie pass. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, I love going to the movies. I went and I saw. Um, the new Resident Evil movie, which that movie slaps, by the way. I'm a big Resident Evil nerd, and this movie was awesome. I haven't seen any of them. Yeah, I know. And we're going to have to do something about this. I know. I know. Um, I went and saw The Eternals, which I love that movie a lot. I feel like I went and saw another movie, but I can't remember what it was now. Maybe I keep thinking of House of Gucci, but you guys already Probably. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, yeah, it was a nice long break. It was. And now we're just jumping back into it. We are jumping right back into it, but we're also going back to the holidays a little bit. Spencer, what are we watching? This totally could have been one of our holiday <laughs> movies. <laughs> uh, this week, we are watching Spencer. Not to be confused with me, Spencer, but Princess Diana Spencer. Oh, this movie. I loved it. It was so good. You know, 
I mean, people are probably going to catch on to this, but I consider myself quite the royal family nerd, and I believe you do too. I do. I do. I obsessively watch The Crown, so I think I know everything about the royal family, but everything I know is based on <laughs> <laughs> fictionist TV shows and movies. Right. But I swear I know everything. <laughs> no, like I watch all the movies, I watch all the documentaries. It's probably not good. But it's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I don't know what it is. I feel like growing up, I couldn't understand why people were so, you know, always talking about the royal family when, you know, the wedding recently with Meghan and Prince William and all these things. Like, I didn't understand people in my hometown staying up till like four in the morning to watch a wedding of some people I've never heard of. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> and like, I, I grew up you know and just like now i get it now i just am like when's the next wedding i want to stay up i'm just really attached to this family i know and i'm just like i can't wait to see where it goes is charles gonna become king will his mother outlive him will it go straight to william this is the drama we're here for (laughs) right i have a lot of thoughts and feelings um, and i don't about the head of state that is not our head of state (laughs) Right. Well, you know, I'm definitely not a Charles fan, as I don't think met much of us are. No, he's he's such a complicated character. But <laughs> this movie was not about him. It was about Lady Diana oh, Spencer. What did you think? It was so, so, so good. Originally, when I heard Kristen Stewart was going to do this, I immediately was like, hard pass. <laughs> like, there's no way. <laughs> And I could not have been more wrong. Like, when I saw that first trailer, saw Kristen Stewart doing, like, the mannerisms of Princess Diana. Like, of course Kristen Stewart was made for this character. She's, no one else could have did her as well as Kristen Stewart in this movie. I think especially, like, Princess Diana in that mind, like, trapped mindset, I think is why she did such a good job. But no, I was the same as you. I was like... Why are you casting Kristen Stewart for this? I like, I didn't understand. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) She really rubbed it in her faces. (laughs) Yeah, she did. I was like, I'm sorry. I judge you by Twilight too much. I know. I will never doubt her again. She tore it up. She did a great job. And she's probably definitely going to be nominated for Best Actress. If she's not, I don't like, I, she should be. She has to. Yeah. It was so good. Uh, like, I I find things, particularly about Princess Diana, as much as I love them, I kind of find it weird the way people, like, make this, like, commentary about her life when she's still in, like, living memory for so many people who were in her personal life. I always find that kind of weird, but it didn't bother me in this movie because it was so fairy tale like You know what I mean? Right. It was very fairy tale. And yeah, I've just, uh, it's hard for me to understand people's obsession because it's that obsession with her is what got her killed in the first place. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's very sad at the same time, but I feel like the narrative's kind of changing at this point where people are starting to understand why, you know, she was the way she was and all the terrible terrible things that were happening to her so yeah i don't know, I think just in this day and age people are definitely understanding what she's going through now more than ever and i just feel like she has a lot more fans and support instead of the obsession of people who just trying to get photos and videos of her back in the day so but i love this movie it was really fairy tale like lots of fun very dramatic still kind of historically accurate but not really but we'll talk about that yeah I mean, we really just need to get into us. Do you want to start us off with a summary? We do. I mean, I do. Who's we? I'm talking in a third person now. You are not the queen. (laughs) Spencer will do the summary now. Oh, do you need help? (laughs) Blink twice. (laughs) Okay. First summary of season two. Here we go. (laughs) In December 1991, the British royal family spent the Christmas holiday at the Queen's Sandringham Estate in Norfolk. Diana, Princess of Wales, is at the lowest point of her troublesome relationship with her no-good husband, Prince Charles. (laughs) That was my rated PG version of what I wanted to say, Elizabeth. (laughs) 
Prince Charles, who is openly cheating on her with Camilla Parker Bowles. This is open knowledge, people. So you could be mad at me if you want, but this is what happened. <laughs> this historical fiction follows Diana as she tries to survive perhaps the most painfully awkward family gathering to ever exist. And that's the summary of Spencer. If you don't want Spencer spoilers, <laughs> leave. <laughs> because we're gonna talk about this movie way too much but it already happened people so <laughs> uh, oh well excellent summary spencer i cannot wait to talk about the costumes let us go behind the wardrobe this stunning collection of costumes is brought to us by director pablo lorraine and costume designer jacqueline duran you will know her from like one of a million things the 2005 pride and prejudice with kira knightley for which she was nominated for her first oscar atonement another oscar nomination the soloist nanny mcphee returns tinker taylor soldier spy anna karenina which she won her first Oscar for, Mr. Turner, yet another Oscar nomination, the 2015 adaptation with Macbeth, Black Mirror episode Nosedive in 2016, the 2017 Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson, another (laughs) Oscar nomination, Darkest Hour, another Oscar nomination, 1917, and the 2019 Little Women, for which she won her second Oscar. And this year, she's having quite the year. She's got Batman coming out. Oof, I'm exhausted after all of that. I know. She, she's carrying this industry on her back right now. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. I was just like, oh. Because it, it's so funny, because it's like, I'll look up the costume designer for if I like something. I'll be like, oh, I wonder who did it. But, like, for some reason, my mind, like, does not be like, oh, they, like, they did this, too. They did that. And then, like, you put it all next to each other, and you're like, oh, Ugh. that's a lot. She did a lot of awesome films. I, I, You're probably not expecting this, but the movie 1917, that's an amazing film. I love that one. And then, of course, Little Women. I mean, I love Little Women. Li- that little woman was brilliant. I like 1917 too. That's a good one. It's a very good one. Um, the sound, though, of that movie. It's the only thing. The sound? It's so loud. That movie is so <laughs> loud. Oh, we're talking about 1917. I thought you were talking about Little Women. Oh, no. 1917. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 1917 spooks you. <laughs> also... Jacqueline, I'm really excited to see what you do with Zoe Kravitz and Batman. Oh, Batman looks so good. <laughs> Zoe Kravitz looks good in that trailer. Robert Pattinson looks good. I'm just like, oh. Oof. Oh, snap. Anyways. Anyways, she did an equally amazing, hopefully Oscar nomination worthy wardrobe for Spencer. And she told Refinery29. There is just a picture that tells you exactly what she wore on each day. It's quite overwhelming that there is that much information about her. So she was like already working from like an insane amount of information. I think Diana might still be the most photographed person ever. I'm not sure. But she definitely was in like the 80s and 90s. So she really just had, like, a wealth of information. When she first got together with Pablo, though, in the beginning, he said they weren't really working with a specific date in terms of look and wardrobe. So anything from 1988 to 1992 was kind of, like, up for grabs. And they also didn't want to, like, place it too specifically so people couldn't, like, pull out an image of Diana and be like, oh, well... Like, this, this, this. Like, this is what you got wrong. She was wearing this. So they really just, like, took all of that information and then went into, okay, what was she thinking? Why did she wear this? What was she wearing when she was, you know, out with her sons compared to when she was, you know, fulfilling royal duties? Jacqueline really just got in there to figure out what exactly was her look. And she said to Nylon... 
I went through hundreds, possibly thousands of images of her and put them into groups like colors, geometric prints, plaids, and got an idea of the things she did repeatedly in the time period. So she was really just like, okay, what is the overall look and feel of Diana? And this was extremely important for her to just like have Diana's look really, really down because while she was excited to work with Kristen Stewart, she really did not have a lot of time. She said to IndieWire, I was honored to work with a fantastic character actress. I had limited access to Kristen. So we had an extremely long fitting. I put together provisional costumes for each scene that we had to examine and work out. It was really focused work. Oh, my God. Yeah. They had a nine hour fitting with her. That is terribly long. That is a long fitting. Isn't that insane? I could barely do a 30 minute fitting like at a clothing store. (laughs) I cannot imagine nine hours of like and the whole time being like, this is all I got. This is all I got. Yeah, that's terrible. But I mean, it worked out, but that makes me sweat a little bit. I know it's that just sounds so crazy. And she said they really didn't deviate too much from what they decided in the fitting. But one thing that probably made it a little easier in the fittings was they partnered with Chanel to make a lot of the pieces seen. Tadler quotes Jacqueline as saying, Spencer was a small film, but we wanted to establish a world that in many ways was the dream world of a princess. The luxury that Chanel represents was very much part of the story we were telling. We wanted the audience to understand the privilege of the world that Diana was part of. And the Chanel brand was a great way of communicating that. So they like knocked on Chanel's door because Princess Diana wore a lot of Chanel and were like, hey, can we get some pieces? And they were like, oh, our ambassador, Kristen Stewart, is in your film. Absolutely. Let's. <laughs> the doors were wide open for them. That's amazing. Pablo, Jacqueline, Chanel, they were like all on board and... Kristen Stewart said to Vogue, in terms of style and glamour, the collaboration gave the movie something we wouldn't have had otherwise. The Chanel pieces added to that aura Diana had as a princess. So it was an incredible match in that sense. So it's like, it sounds like Chanel was just like the cherry on top of what made this brilliant, brilliant wardrobe. Right. That was the thing that just made it pop. Yeah. And we are like really going to get into just how much they contributed when we break this down first though spencer do you need a little a little tea break yeah i think it's only right that we drink tea during this episode so absolutely i'm gonna go make myself another cup of tea Ooh, sounds lovely (laughs) we will be right back Welcome back, everyone. (laughs) We had a funny break, but we're all back now. Are you ready to dive into Spencer, Elizabeth? Oh, I am ready. Take me to England, Spencer. I'll take you to England. And we're starting the movie. And Diana is obviously very, very late to something. Uh, She's just driving through the wilderness of England. And she's wearing this incredible plaid jacket. And I am obsessed with this look. Um, And I really appreciate that in the notes, Elizabeth actually put comparisons to the actual Princess Diana wearing some of these same garments. And like, man, it is verbatim. This is a great jacket. Yeah, this is definitely one of those pieces where they were like, okay, we're going to replicate this, but just make it like a little different. Like the plaid's a little different, but like the cut, the colors are like very on point right it's almost like I, you kind of mentioned this that Jacqueline basically wanted us to feel true but also it's like a fairy tale still so she could kind of mix and match and use whatever pieces she wanted because this isn't really focusing on one specific 
buy the book date. And this is one of my favorite costumes, actually. Yeah, this is a great one. Um, it really kind of contrasts like where she's starting from. Cause like this is clearly like a Christmassy outfit to like go to San- Sandrium house in. But it's also like so like it's so tight. She's like so like bundled up in it. It's like, okay, clearly something's ready to snap here. Right. Very fitted and still kind of 80s, which I love it. Um, I'm a big fan of the 80s. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) this jacket rocks. (laughs) It does. And it really contrasts nicely against the, the cooks and military personnel getting ready at the house. So drab. It's so drab. The the cooks are basically like military officers themselves. Yeah, I mean, I think the head chef, um, I, I he probably was a former like military officer. Right. He seems like a killer, both in and out of the kitchen. Yeah, I think the I, if I re- remembering all these documentaries correctly, they end up hiring a lot of people like straight out of the military. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but no, I did like these costumes, and I, I especially liked the military costumes. Those felt very um, true to the period, yeah, which is really great. Very true to the British military. Right. They have a different type of military than we do. Equally as drab is everybody who is not Diana. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> not going to say it, but I guess I'll say it. This family kind of sucks sometimes, <laughs> and they they're very kind of very cookie cutter boring sometimes and to me it doesn't get any more cookie cutter boring than the incredible peter pettigrew timothy is back and he just plays the ultimate british villain he does whether he's peter pettigrew that little evil guy from enchanted and now he's in spencer this guy oh and don't forget sweetie todd like this yes. this guy is amazing at being the worst he is like he really is he plays major alistair gregory in this movie and he's just it, it it's so funny though because I feel like most of his characters are extremely unpolished. Right. This guy is like, I don't think there's a single item not shining on his person. Right. I I was actually going to say that because originally when I saw he was going to be in this, I have this issue where I could only see him as Peter Pettigrew from Harry Potter. (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't matter what he does. But this one... He like I actually saw him for like the actor he was like he was very polished he was very put together his suit was fitting right he didn't have like a weird balding mullet where he was transforming into a rat <laughs> to be carried around by Ron Weasley like this <laughs> it just worked and I I was like excited I was like oh my gosh I see you for who you truly are a polished amazing actor I know I I just he's so good and I just. His whole, his face the whole time hardly changes. And I'm just like, how do you do that? Right. He was giving me like real Charles dance vibes, you know, Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes. Like that's, that's why I kept thinking about the whole time. Who's actually in the crown, but he is. Yeah. But his suit is really, really great. Uh, Jacqueline Duran does some really great suiting in this film. Uh, she does. Eva, I do love, cause it is Christmas Eve. I love his his like maroon reddish tie because I feel like that was like his little attempt at Christmas. Right. He's like and it's like, you know, everybody makes that little attempt at Christmas, no matter like what their job is. (laughs) He's like, oh, it's Christmas Eve. Let me pull out the (laughs) the maroon tie so we could spice things up around here. (laughs) I know. I know. Uh, and I can't believe that they weigh themselves before and after the holiday. I know. I was like, what is going on here? Who came up with this? And this is, that's actually like a true story too, by the way. Yeah. And I'm like, well, who came up with this? As soon as I saw Diana walk up there, I was like, oh man, this movie is going to really, really take us there. I'm like, no wonder you didn't do well <laughs> yeah. in this family. Like, Oof. that's not shocking. Oh, anyone's, my cat's trying to burrow into my room. Hold on. I'm a little teapot short hey, when you're and stout. <laughs> I know. A 
Elizabeth's playing with her cats. It wouldn't be a season premiere without the introduction of your cats. Without Eowyn. She was literally <laughs> tearing up the carpet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why can I hear her with your new fancy setup? I know. Eowyn, I, I would like to speak with her. Eowyn, you know that today was the season premiere recording date, right? She did. You know this is very important to all of us? Get it together, okay? Spencer, she took that very seriously. <laughs> 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 all right let's continue <laughs> sorry major detour diana gets there is not happy about the weighing situation and immediately changes into this fabulous helms tooth pencil skirt and red turtleneck <laughs> uh i love this look on her i love the red on her i love the like long sleeves with the turtleneck but then she has like the skirt I, don't, I kind of like that silhouette where it's like covered up top, but then like you're still showing some legs. It's so like, that's so Diana, you know? It is. It's very like, it's that like, oh, you want to be like Christmassy and wintry without being Christmassy and wintry. I'm like, this is how the, this is how fancy people dress for the holidays. No ugly sweaters. <laughs> right. And the pearls are introduced, which the pearls actually become quite the plot point actually her costumes in general really become quite the plot point in this film which is oh, pretty cool yeah. oh yeah but the pearls especially like they look amazing um but i know that she might not love them as much as i love them as she says they are beautiful though right <laughs> <laughs> i just love how she's like complaining like she is nobody to the point where she's complaining to like the maids that he bought her and his mistress the same set of pearls right and the maids are just like ma'am i'm just happy to be here <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just please like, don't tell me anything incriminating right right <laughs> and i'm like come on charles don't you at least like have people to help you not make these mistakes that's what i'm saying he's trashy he's been openly cheating on her he straight will buy them the same gifts like everyone knows it it's Ugh. insane I'm going to throw my laptop by the end of this recording. That's... Please don't. We need to record more of these. <laughs> but Diana, her troubles are just starting. She finds a book the of uh, Anne Boleyn, Life and Death of a Martyr, in her bedroom. So she starts having visions of Anne Boleyn at Christmas Eve dinner. The major is just like bugging her about her eating habits and the media attention and like she just wants to visit her family's old estate that's all she wants to do right i mean diana's tripping right now she's having a hard time at dinner this is the part where she is eat she thinks she's eating her pearls yeah this part actually stressed me out because the music was so intense She's choking on pearls, and for a second I was like, is she actually choking on her pearls? Or is this a vision? What the F is going on? Oh my gosh. <laughs> when Kristen Stewart puts the, like, scoops up the pearl, eats it, and cracks it with her teeth. Yeah. I, like, held my mouth. I could, like, I couldn't. I was visibly sweating <laughs> in my bedroom when I was watching this. <laughs> I couldn't do it, and then the queen turned into Anne Boleyn, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> this is scary uh, all right let's get to the costumes of this scene i know this was like the perfect dress for this it was a slender column dress that diane wore a lot during this period and jacqueline said to vulture i riffed on the idea of a couple of those kinds of dresses and combined them the color green looks like it was planned because it was the same color as the soup. But maybe when the production designer saw the dress, he made the soup the same color. That was not <laughs> planned. Oh, that's so funny. That wasn't planned. Well, that soup looked nasty. That soup looked nasty. <laughs> and it's like the fact that her dress and the soup were the same color. I was like, I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> like <laughs> That visually, that made me extremely uncomfortable <laughs> that her dress and the soup were the same color i'm Ooh. like she's eating her clothes i don't like this 
Elizabeth's like, I gotta get out of here right now. I don't like this. <laughs> you were feeling how Diana was feeling in this moment. Dude, I was. I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, uh, well, angry, I, hate eating the pearls. I actually did like this dress, though. I like the shape of the back, especially when you see like the V shape, with the open back. It was really pretty. It was so beautiful. And it's like... When she shows it to her on the hanger, I'm like, you're putting Princess Diana in that. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, okay. Okay, Kristen Stewart. Like, <laughs> okay. We see you. You look good. Right. It's very pretty. Um, and the pearls looked good on it until she started eating them. So, <laughs> yes. And then my, I was watching this with my mom and we watched that scene. And my mom's like, she didn't actually eat the pearls, did she? I was like, N- no. And then it's the next scene when she's like running to the bathroom and she she has them again. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was relieved too because for a second I was like, do I need to Google this? Because I'm scared right now. Right? Well, it's like Diana did do some scary things in her life. But not that. There's a podcast you should listen to, but not that. Because I'm like, immediately people would have been like trying to stop her. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. well, that, or they would have just watched her choke. I don't know. That, that would be bad PR for them. Yeah, that's true. Entire staff lets Princess Diana choke on her pearls, question mark. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, but this is not the only stunning look at the table. I have to say, the queen looks quite nice in this right she she did look really great queen lizzie yes. um it looked just like her actually i need to who is this actress that played her because she did a great job i th- actually was just about to look that up hold on we're doing a fact check to everyone stella Garnett. Mm, stella yeah she looked really good she looked just like the queen she really did and i love just like Because she has this beautiful diamond necklace and earring set with this, like, white iridescent lace dress on. And it almost looks like her dress is made of diamonds. Right. It does. She looks very expensive. And I think, for me, what sold it to me was the shape of the neckline. Like, that was very Queen Elizabeth to me. Yes. That's what sold it for me. It's like the neckline with the hair. I was like, oh, yes. (laughs) <laughs> queen elizabeth i just love actresses that are cast as the queen like olivia coleman to me is my favorite of all time i know what personally, you're personally th- helen mirren oh helen i thought you're gonna say claire foy oh my gosh i love the queen i love that movie <laughs> i love that movie so much my siblings gave it to me as a cr- as a birthday gift once <laughs> <laughs> i've never actually seen it oh I'm it's so sorry. good it's so good <laughs> um the next one in the crown is going to be Imelda Staunton, who played Dolores Umbridge. Umbridge. I am so excited. Umbridge. I'm very hyped on that. Umbridge. Umbridge is playing the queen. Like, what is that? It's perfect. Well, people are going to be like, it, you know, she's just Umbridge. But no, she's such an incredible actress. Like, yeah. the reason why you hate Dolores Umbridge so much is because she's such a great actress. So she's about to do the queen some justice in the crown. She is. Another really creepy part that scared me was when the queen turned into Anne Boleyn. But (laughs) Anne Boleyn does look great. Yeah, her costume's wonderful. For a second, I was like, who is she? (laughs) I was so confused. I was like, oh my gosh. And it's like, you know it's Anne Boleyn because of the necklace. Like, you put that necklace on any character in a, a, like, story about the royal families and the royals, and you're like, oh, that I guess that's Anne Boleyn. (laughs) But, because it's like... It's such a stark contrast from the queen in her, like, light glittering gown to, like, Anne Boleyn with her, like, French veil on and, like, the, like, the dark, uh, I guess that's, like, maroon and her pearls. It's just like, oh, wait, hold on. The queen was just there. Who is this? Right. I was spooked. I was confused for a whole second. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. But I, when I saw the headpiece, though, that's what sold it to me. I was like, oh. Like, something really weird is going... Like, she's seeing a ghost right now, so... Yeah, she is. She definitely is. But it's okay, because she's just, like, gonna chill for the night until the Major just ruins it for her. 
Yeah, she she put on her like her 2020 2021 costume. <laughs> it's very like 90s, but like everyone's wearing this look right now. <laughs> Dude, I have everything in my closet to like make a similar version of this. And I'm just like, yes, bring back the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's wearing like these little like high-waisted blue jeans. She just looks good, but she's just trying to like stuff her face. And of course, Timothy Spall comes down and ruins all the fun. I know. It's like, I love this because it's like, she's like clearly getting ready for bed. So she's wearing this like cute little camisole. But then like, she just wants to like be cozy and have a midnight snack. Like who doesn't? I love this scene at first because it's like, she's got those big socks on and like the cardigan and she's just like eating all the fancy food. And I'm like, yes, this is me. (laughs) This is, like, what I want in my life is just to go walk into a refrigerator and have a bunch of food. And then he comes in, and it's, like, that, the color, the pink with, like, the light blue and the white socks. When he walks in, she suddenly, like, looks like a little girl that just got caught with, like, the candy. Right. I mean, this costume does age her down a lot. And I feel like that's kind of like one of the internal problems she's dealing with right now because she's so close to like her, her, you know, her old home. And now she's like feeling very like nostalgic of like her simpler childhood before all this craziness. So when she's in the fridge, her costume kind of like reverts back to like the younger Diana that she like really kind of misses at this moment. Yeah, because she I mean, she did have a very troubled childhood that she didn't quite get out of before marrying him. So it's like, of course, she like she kind of wants to go back to that. Oh, Timothy Spall, just a grim reaper of happy moments. In like a beautifully cut tux. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he looks good, though, I'll say. <laughs> I, I was just like, man, you like wear a fancy outfit and wear it well. Yeah, he does. He really like got himself together for this film. He looks great. Like, some people in those, like, don't, like, look like they're trying too hard. But when he puts it on, it's just like, oh, yes, that, (laughs) you belong in that. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Uh, But Diana can just have no peace because we didn't really talk about her, um, her dresser, Maggie, but they're, like, they're besties. However, on Christmas morning, she wakes up and it's a new dresser. She knows the woman, but she's like, um, I want Maggie. And the woman's like, mm, Maggie's not here. Uh, let's get you dressed. <laughs> and she's just like, mm, no. And just Charles and the staff and the family just continue to bother her. She's just having a time of it. Yeah, this this is so frustrating. But also, I will say, just side note, if I were to... The one thing I'm jealous of from these from this movie, I want like a dresser. <laughs> right? Know? I want someone to pick my outfits, but most of all, I need that person who walks in in the morning and says, "Good morning, sir," and opens all my blinds and curtains because <laughs> <laughs> when my curtains are closed, I never wake up. So I need this person in my life. <laughs> it's like she, she has no choice. She has to be up. Like that person that's just like, "Come on, come on, come on." I'm like, I want that. Yeah, because my alarm clock just not does not do it for me anymore. I just I ignore it. It's white noise. Dude, in the morning, I consistently have alarms going off every 15 minutes. Yeah, me too. It's just automated. This past week, I was doing every five minutes. Oh, oh, Spencer. That's the sign of a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but diana's problem is she wants maggie back maggie's her friend she talks to maggie maggie's like a normal person you can kind of tell like the contrast and how maggie dresses and how her new dresser angela dresses it's like angela's very formal maggie's like kind of laid back maggie's the cool dresser you know she is She's like, I'm not just any dresser. I'm a cool dresser. Yeah. Diana tells her, like, all her problems. (laughs) Which she seems to do with everyone, actually. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Even her kids. She's like, you will not believe what your grandma did today. (laughs) Right? I love everyone. She's like, I'm not happy. I am not happy. This is why I'm not happy. And they're just all like, okay, Diana, whatever you say. 
<laughs> but can you just like play along anyway? <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. I hate it. And Maggie is quickly dismissed. And I'm really happy Diana didn't wear what the dresser told her to wear. Because I love this little blue number on her. Right. She stands out so much in the Christmas portrait photo. Christmas portrait. You she can still really call it a portrait. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what's the terminology uh yeah i'm really glad that she wears the blue skirt because she really stands out and she stands out from the family as a whole but i love that moment when she walks in late of course because she was late to everything and she wears that blue skirt and you could tell everyone in the room is like this girl right here in her blue skirt like how dare you <laughs> and she's like i'm wearing it so you got rid of my dresser so yeah, she's like, forget you. It's like that that beautiful blue, like ice blue skirt. And then I love the top because it's like shimmery and like polka dots and it looks like snow. I love it. Right. <laughs> it's very pretty. And I just, I love it again. Like, cl- like everyone just like blends together with the exception of Diana, the queen and William and Harry. Right. It, everyone kind of blends together. But I did like how Jacqueline costumed the entire family because, you know, we're, if you watch The Crown, you're used to like every member of the family like having their moment. But in this movie, it was very like there were characters in this family that didn't have a single word of dialogue in the film. One of them, I believe, was Princess Margaret. I don't think she said anything. But like Mm-mm. still Dude, Fergie was in this and she didn't say anything. <laughs> right. Like they're <laughs> sitting in the the portrait and like Jack Lee costumed all the members of the royal family. And while they didn't have their own screen time or dialogue, I still feel like she got the costumes and mannerisms pretty much down, especially to me is most evident with Princess Margaret. Um, comparative to, you know, Queen Elizabeth, I still feel like that very much looks like something Princess Margaret would wear. I feel like Margaret doesn't get a lot of like screen time in anything except the crown. So I feel like that's that's very true. And like, yeah, they really like made her stick out in terms of wardrobe. <laughs> People who don't know anything about the royal family who are listening to this right now are like, <laughs> <laughs> what are these people talking about? <laughs> it's Margaret. Anyways. Anyways, she keeps seeing Anne Boleyn and we get to see Anne Boleyn's just beautiful Tudor dress finally. And it's all of its gorgeous majesty. Ooh. Beautiful. This is great. This is when Oscar award winning costume designer Jacqueline Duran was like, I just get to go crazy with this costume real quick. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> and, she, and she went for it. And it looks awesome. It looks awesome. And then I love this, like, <laughs> this little scene with the major and the dresser. And she's just like, she didn't wear, she didn't wear what I told her to. She Because they're watching them leave church on the TV. She's like, she didn't wear what I told her to. Did I lay out the wrong thing? Did I, did, did, like... <laughs> i'm just like why do you care so much (laughs) it's like a whole issue that she did not wear the exact thing that was set for her to wear to church and i'm like why is this an issue because it's just all performance it's just one big like production that they're trying to put on with the royal family but it's it's like clearly nobody cares she can like wear a paper bag and people like wouldn't care yeah, people loved Diana. They still do. I mean, like, she could have wore anything. Oh, yeah. But what she wears to church is particularly beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's so good. So this was a replica. Jacqueline told Vulture, We asked Chanel for replicas of any clothes Diana had worn from them. And in the early period, it wasn't many. But there was a coat she wore to visit the president of France in 1988. And they had Kristen Stewart try on the coat basically like from their archive. But it was too big to be worn like just by itself, kind of the way Princess Diana did. So she was like, okay, we're going to like change this up a little bit. Diana did, in 1993, wear a red coat to church uh, in Sandrium. 
So they were like, okay, well, let's like take the black hat and veil from when she wore that red coat and make this red coat match like Kristen Stewart and like what we're trying to do a little bit better. And Chanel just like remade it for them. Sure. Anything for Kristen Stewart is what Chanel said. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like you can tell like they made some like small changes because I I feel like Kristen Stewart is like a little bit like smaller than Princess Diana because Princess Diana was like a fairly like tall person. So I feel like they definitely needed to like tailor it to her stature. But like, dang, like they did a good job. It's like beautiful (laughs) and looks almost exactly the same right it's such a good coat and i love that she's wearing red to church like she's like so fiery and angry and just like really over everything so like who wears this bright red to church and i love that and the hat is just ooh. it's so good because it's like she has to be in front of the photographers but she doesn't want to so there's the veil and like i love the red too because it's like yeah she is she is angry and like upset so she wears the red but it's like it's christmas day this is like probably the only day she could get away with that right (laughs) she totally was given a pass because she's like oh i'm wearing red because it's christmas yeah yeah i'm like that's (laughs) but in her head she's like i don't care i just hate everybody (laughs) like i hate everyone and everything and i'm done (laughs) the next very scary scene is when she talks to Charles and I feel like she looks like a lawyer in this scene. (laughs) She is like wearing this white top and I do feel like she's presenting herself very official because she's going to go speak with her husband. And I just feel like every time she has to go speak with her husband has to be like in this official matter because they essentially are, they can't stand each other. It's a business arrangement at this point. (laughs) Yeah. It's literally like a business arrangement. Like she has to put on her like nicest outfit to go talk to her boss at this moment. And it's terrible. Um, But it looks good on her though. I will say. It does. And like, once again, it makes her stand out in this just like gray brown landscape they're in. Yeah. He really, Charles really blends in with the environment around him. He's kind of like camouflaged. Yeah. On Christmas day again, we have another piece chanel replicated for them it's after the queen's speech is televised diana tries to go and talk to the queen and correct like just connect a little bit with her and the queen's just kind of like okay (laughs) so instead she goes down to talk to the head chef who is like her only friend left but she has this amazing blue chanel jacket on it's absolutely stunning. I just looking at the fabric of it, it's just, oh, it's so good. It is so good. And Jacqueline tore right from history. Uh, Tadler quotes her as saying, I looked back through pictures of Princess Diana for images of her wearing Chanel. Most that I found were later than 92, but there was one significant Chanel outfit that she wore when visiting Paris in 88. The blue cardigan slash jacket fit very well with the style that she was wearing in our period. So I felt like it would fit in seamlessly. The Chanel costume jewelry we used was also perfect for our date and for Diana's style. So it's just like she is head to toe Chanel right here. Right. (laughs) The dream. And I've I've seen this jacket before. And yeah, like, like you said, it's just this is just a incredible costume i love all the chanel i love how much uh chanel was involved with this film like that's amazing yeah literally so about this piece jacqueline told vulture i said to chanel do you have that and they made it for us (laughs) it's something she actually wore but in the context we've put it we're still there in her world wow she lucked out on a lot of these costumes She really did. I just can't imagine calling up Chanel and being like, hey, do you have the jacket that (laughs) Princess Diana wore to France in uh, 1988? (laughs) Yeah. Can you make it for Kristen Stewart? Great. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He'll be done by tomorrow. A big... (laughs) 
<laughs> wild wild and again i can't like even the looks that she like translated like piece for piece it still is just so specific to the movie it fits in so beautifully right but then the way that kristen stewart wears it though like it's such just like great high fashion piece but just like her mannerisms are so brilliant because when she steps out to see the queen she almost like becomes like this little girl again who's like standing in like this costume that this dress that almost it's made for someone else almost which is really quite cool yeah yeah it really looks too big on her when she goes to talk to the queen such a good piece and then i love she goes for a walk and she changes into something that's clearly like more her speed something she's just very comfortable in and the major just ruins her wonderful little moment with the pheasant is that what they were pheasants yes yeah with the pheasant (laughs) which by the way i've i've still never seen like a real pheasant are pheasants like just flying around or is it only an england thing i feel like it's an england thing how do people just find pheasants can someone write us and tell us where to find pheasants yeah i don't get it (laughs) apparently they're dumb too like they're not smart animals (laughs) But yeah, we have a Timothy Spall costume alert, and he's here to ruin Princess Diana's (laughs) walk. (laughs) As he, that's his main goal throughout this film is just how can I interject myself and ruin her moment? Literally, he literally ruins her walk because she's wearing this really beautiful cream and orange plaid jacket, which is like the cream turtleneck and these beautiful like leather chelsea boots and she's just trying to talk to a pheasant and have a walk and he's like you only have five hours to get ready for dinner (laughs) talking to a pheasant (laughs) it's true though (laughs) i think that was my favorite moment when she spoke with the pheasant (laughs) yeah she's like pheasant this is some bullshit and the pheasant was like girl i know i mean they're getting ready to start shooting us in a couple hours (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh this is such a good moment oh, and he's just like he's in a relaxed look as well but i'm like you do not look relaxed sir no this is his leisure suit which it's like still more clothes than i i've ever worn in my life you know <laughs> i know it's just like so many layers and the way he's talking to her like he's trying to explain like her duty and she's just like excuse me I've been doing this for 10 years. I know what's expected of me. The point, that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you're you're giving me real Peter Pettigrew vibes right now, sir. So I need you to piss off. <laughs> yeah. I love how she just continues with her walk. She's like, bye. <laughs> and I love her next look, but I think we have to take a little, little break. Yes, I need another cup of tea. I need Elizabeth. another cup of tea too. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Before we go to break, you are Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, right? Hello? Yes. And I am Spencer, Princess Diana Spencer. (gasps) Like, how did this happen? Are we supposed to be enemies? Well, I feel like the Queen and Diana, like, weren't enemies. No. I feel like the Queen just, like, did not understand her. The Queen just didn't really care. She's like, do your job, ma'am. I'm sorry this sucks. My life sucks, too. But, like, it sucks for everyone. Which is still not okay, but... It's not okay. And it's it's so funny, because, like, the queen was, like, actually raised, like, extremely sheltered. So it's, like, of course she, like, believes these, like... She has these crazy expectations. But it's, it's like, everybody around them, all, like, the people, like, running their lives. It's, like, can you, like, have a clue and get a grip? <laughs> like... Right. <laughs> literally if anyone told the queen like oh hey diana's really struggling like she just like needs to back off a little bit like have some time like get like get things together like x y and z needs to happen for things to be good the queen would have probably just been like "Mm, okay okay cool (laughs) all right let's go to break (laughs) we need some tea we're just we're just chatting now okay everybody take a break get some tea Okay, Queen Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth, are you ready to finish the rest of this film? I am. All right, let's get into it. Uh, so the rest of this movie, we just kind of like jump through a lot of different costumes pretty quickly here. Yeah. Uh, starting with uh, the dress that I think we've all been waiting for was the Christmas dinner dress. I mean, yes. Whoa. Whoa, indeed. <laughs> whoa to this entire series of scenes. Diana, she is just like stressed out by her in-laws and has like a little Christmas Day breakdown. <laughs> but she looks like a million bucks doing it. We are talking about the cream and gold gown that she wears to Christmas dinner. Wow, it's a good one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's stunning. Oh my gosh. Now, Jacqueline, she didn't know if Princess Diana had like worn a Chanel evening gown during this period. So she was like, just like, show me what you have in the archive. And she found look number 82 from the spring summer 1988 Haute Couture show designed by Carl Lagerfeld himself. That is insanity. I cannot believe that they were just like, oh, look at this one. Yeah. They were just like, oh, we have this. And it's like, oh, okay. Just rifling through a closet. (laughs) Exactly. And it was too precious to be worn repeatedly. So they just remade it for them. What? Wait, wait. They remade it? They remade this remade it i mean i was gonna say it looks it definitely looks like it's been altered but like this is another time where chanel was like yeah we'll just whip up another one for you oh my gosh jacqueline duran must have been like this is the best job ever here's just a little a little excerpt from the vogue italy article about this dress when it comes to pleating the dress owes this wonderful volume to the house of lagnan These technical gestures combined with the miraculous hands of five seamstresses made it possible to achieve this masterpiece. In total, there are no less than 1,034 hours of work, including 700 only for embroidery. That is actually insanity. I just, I don't know. I'm just like, (laughs) how, how, how? why like oh my gosh how like i should have looked up their budget because i'm just like the math is not mathing that that that's just the math is not (laughs) yeah there's too many human hours on this that that was like 44 days of work (laughs) like that's crazy uh, but it is so beautiful yeah i mean it's one of the best costumes of the entire film and probably one of the best costumes of the year like it's just it is what it is It's that pinnacle of what they want her to be, but also like kind of what she's feeling at that point. It's like very like fairy tale little girl dressing up as princess. It's frilly. It's shiny. And just it makes those pearls stand out. Now, that was a real set of pearls. Jacqueline talked to Vulture about these pearls. She said the pearls are from a jewelry house called Moad which supplied the film's fine jewelry. Chanel provided the costume jewelry, uh, but this house provided the fine jewelry. They're real, Duran said. And I think the slightly large size works well in telling that story. Yeah, I mean, pearls are beautiful. It's one of my favorite parts of the film. Those are real pearls. That... That makes me nervous, actually. It's like, oh my gosh, you're wearing something so expensive around your neck. I just, ugh. That that must be tens of thousands of dollars. Right. I mean, probably more. Con- conservatively. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's just tossing them around <laughs> like it's no big deal. They're absolutely beautiful, though. I've just, I'm not a big jewelry person, I should say. I don't know why. Like, you know, I've, I obviously study costume and fashion, but I've just never, me and jewelry, I just have never clicked. But like, I saw these pearls and I was like, wow, like they, they do so much to tell the story. These, this piece of fine jewelry is telling the story that we are watching right now. And that's really awesome. I know. And it's like, there's such a representation for the royal family because it's like they're 
bold and in your face, but they're pearls. So it's like they're automatically understated. But then it's like this very like, it's very short string. So it like really looks like they're choking her. It's like, oh, I'm just being slowly strangled by this beautiful thing. (laughs) And then it's, but then it's like, okay, it's the same thing that he gave to another person. And like the royal family is constantly like giving like their pieces of jewelry like to each other. So it's like, yes, it's this fine, beautiful thing, but it's like not even something that's like mine. Right. Just a way that's like slowly strangling her throughout this entire film. It's just oh. ugh, such a good metaphor. Oh, my goodness. I love it. And then like when she's in the house with that gray waxed jacket on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's this part was giving me so much anxiety. I was like, oh, my gosh. No, like not that beautiful beautiful dress like walking through this really like worn down dirty house but then when she put the coat over it just felt like she was like taking the costume back for herself like she loved the dress but she wasn't comfortable and she put this coat over and she just felt like her again yeah it's it's so perfect and like it just cuts such a beautiful image when she's like walking around her dilapidated family home jacqueline said to vulture I hadn't originally imagined it to be a waxed coat, but that was what worked best for the art department. And Pablo wanted that color. I wanted it to be believably a British aristocrat's coat from the past. I took on board what everyone said about how a wool coat wouldn't have lasted for that amount of time. So I went back to the barber style coat. It was good that it wasn't a green coat because you never would have been able to see it as different from all the coats that were being worn in the movie. So it's like she was really like, we're pulling it back, but it's still different from, you know, the kind of age style that the royal family's in. Right. Definitely. Oh, I love it. Oh, so we get to see Anne Boleyn one more time. But Diana also turns into Anne Boleyn. And I didn't catch this until the second (laughs) time I watched it. And I was like freaked out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The Bella Swan jumped out of Kristen Stewart in this scene. (laughs) Right? I was like, is that Bella Swan? (laughs) I think you're in the wrong movie. (laughs) She looks beautiful though. Like the way that that headpiece like really frames her face out so right it's just really beautiful and all the pearl details on it is oh it's good yeah and it's like it it makes her look so small but this is also when we get this amazing montage of diana's life starting out with this amazing sailor outfit with the pirate hat. I love this costume so much. When I originally saw like the promo photos for this film coming out and I saw the pirate hat, I just kept thinking like, why the pirate hat? Like, I just, I can't imagine Princess Diana wearing this at all. But I don't know, like something about it just like really works. It works. I love it because it's like, it's very official. Like, I feel like she just came from like some like, naval like appointment but then it's like she's the rogue of the family she's the pirate of the family like (laughs) it's got her flair Jacqueline talked to entertainment weekly about this look she said that was based roughly on something diana wore she went to review the navy i think in portsmouth pablo and kristen loved the idea of her wearing a pirate hat so we made the pirate hat and we made it in yellow and it was sort of fl- a floating costume because we weren't really sure where it was going to fit. <laughs> but it had to go in somewhere and I think it found its place. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. I love they were just like, we have this costume, IDK. <laughs> It'll go somewhere. <laughs> it's just too cute to like not use it. So I'm glad they were like, oh. We have this montage coming up. She could just throw it on for that. Like, perfect. I want a pirate hat. And this is like the best yellow I've ever seen. I love this yellow. And I, me and yellow do not get along. But right now, me and yellow are clicking. Same. Like, I don't really get along with yellow either. But this, brilliant. Brilliant. 
And then, of course... Then we come to the penultimate moment we were all waiting for, the wedding dress. I the mean, wedding dress that you see for like 15 seconds. <laughs> everybody knows the Princess Diana wedding dress. And I love this wedding dress because it's not... It's not a hundred percent accurate, but this is such like a fairy tale crazy montage that she just gets to wear whatever and it still feels right. And it's you know, it's close, but I just love this version of it. It's really beautiful. I agree. And Jacqueline, she really didn't like the rest of the thing. She didn't want it to be, you know, a hundred percent accurate. And they actually bought a dress and adapted it. <laughs> that's crazy uh she said to indie wire because we're not the crown it's really about practical filmmaking as much as keeping with the whole ethos of the design i just made the clothes in the way that felt we were talking about the character and let them run their course i love she was like we're not the crown we're not trying to like retell (laughs) yeah verbatim this story (laughs) They're like, she's about to run around in the grass and stuff. Like, we're not doing the 30, 40 foot long train. Like, she's just, you know, running around. Come on. They already spent the past, like, 200 days working on the Christmas dinner dress. They were definitely like, I'm buying this and we're just going to cut it up and call it a day. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. She also spoke to Entertainment Weekly about this. She said, so we just adapted a wedding dress to be an approximation of it. I'm under no illusion that there were differences between Diana's dress and the dress that we made, but it was kind of the spirit of the dress rather than an exact replica. I love, she's like, I know it's different. I know that. (laughs) She's like, what do you want me to do? Remake the dress? We already remade so many other things, but I actually like this version because it, 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 it does contain the spirit of the old dress but still feels almost like a little bit more 2021, you know, like this feels very much like built for Kristen Stewart's version of Diana. I agree. Yeah. It really does. Like it's very similar. And also like, this is just kind of like a memory sequence and it's like, we all know our memories aren't perfect. (laughs) So it's almost like, it's definitely like what you could imagine Diana had in her mind over time of what that dress looked like. Right, 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 right. That makes a hundred percent sense. Much simpler, softer, much more fairy tale than what she actually had on. That makes sense. Elizabeth, you are so intelligent. I love it. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But that piece was brilliant. And I also love that. She's just like, yeah, I bought something and adapted it. When so many times it's like, oh, we were able to make every single piece custom. She's just like, no, (laughs) Chanel was doing enough for us. I like to imagine that you remember that store you used to work at. I won't name it here, but (laughs) yeah, I imagine she (laughs) popped into that store and like bought one of the wedding dresses. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. Just casually walking past the scrubs to the wedding dresses. This looks like Princess Diana. <laughs> it popped into the fabric room. Uh, let me, do you have some white silk? We need to make some adjustments to this. <laughs> beautiful piece among many, many beautiful pieces. And so many pieces of her as a little girl. And it's like, I love how everything from when she's a child is like so bright and happy. Right. I also love that when you see Diana as a little girl, you see that same exact yellow that was used in the pirate costume. Yeah. it's That's why I feel like she's like really connecting to like her younger self in this montage. Definitely. And then just like all the random beautiful gowns like this, this one shoulder black ball gown with the tiara gorgeous for no reason her when she's like watching her younger self do ballet beautiful little skirt suit my personal favorite is the red gown that she's dancing around in for no reason (laughs) oh my gosh yes that i think that one slaps (laughs) i think that is my favorite as well and it's just like you can tell that's a memory she loves because she was probably like feeling so it was probably a time in their marriage when she was feeling so cute 
and doing so well and she's like biting her diamonds <laughs> like i was like what is <laughs> happening here yeah she was feeling it and i love it she's also feeling this like beautiful little frilly white top with just the fairy tale skirt i'm like you see this at forever 21 today yeah for sure i've seen that skirt before <laughs> <laughs> but after her beautiful little montage she's still not doing well and they finally bring back maggie and she's able to talk finally even Pe- peter Pettigrew is like this is we're done with this somebody bring maggie back the only person that could maybe talk some sense into diana the only person and they go and they talk on the beach and she's wearing this great cream sweater and like letterman s jacket and this was actually something very similar to what Diana wore. Um, Jacqueline told Vulture, she's shaking hands with some nurses wearing exactly the same jacket. I couldn't believe that I found it. I was beside myself. Kristen loved it. And we just thought that can be the jacket for the beach. I love how they're just throwing costumes places. Yeah. Well, they're like, this is based off of true events, but like, I get to do whatever I want with it, though. And they just were like, it's almost like they're throwing all the best Princess Diana costumes at this as they can. I love that jacket on the beach. It, it's so beautiful. It feels almost like a callback to the beginning of the film when she showed up in that plaid. It's like she's getting back to comfortable, fun Diana. Yeah, exactly. And I love that she puts her yellow pirate suit back on her family's um crow in the field the scarecrow yeah it was perfect i was like that's a great way to like take this very childlike costume and throw it up on the scarecrow near like her childhood home i love it exactly especially because she she stole its jacket (laughs) Um, one of what i love more is when she breaks up this weird pheasant shooting scene and she's like boys we're getting the fuck out of here you want to know where we're going yeah kfc (laughs) kfc oh my gosh i love it she wears that red jacket she took off the scarecrow and she's like i don't want my sons doing this this is stupid (laughs) she's She's like like, this is stupid you're all stupid we're out we're getting some fried chicken we're leaving (laughs) and she just has the best like sports jacket hat and glasses combo that i have ever seen this is supposed to be like disguised Diana, but I see definitely like this is what Kristen Stewart wears like on a normal day too. <laughs> uh, yeah, this definitely. <laughs> oh man. She is like her most comfortable in these scenes. Right. Oh, it was beautiful. And now I want some fried chicken. I know. Oh, that is the end of Spencer though. Oh, such a good movie. I loved it. It was it was like art. This was like a big old art, like fashion journey that we went on. Especially like when we were watching a montage too. I was like, wow, this is just like one big fashion-y like campaign that I love. I know. I'm like Chanel. Like, I don't think you could have done more. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much. You know, Elizabeth though, we With this being season two, we are doing a few new things with the show, and I think you should take us all into our new segment that you created. Tell everyone about it. So everyone, we thought that at the end of the episodes, we should just have, you know, a little bit of fun and decide which costume rules them all. This is our new segment. Spencer, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. (laughs) The one costume to rule them all. So, Spencer, tell me your candidate for one costume to rule them all. This is really hard, and I've been thinking about this for the past, like, week. My first gut feeling is to go with the Christmas dinner dress, because to me, that feels like the most obvious. So much hours went into it. It's so beautiful. But I changed my mind at the last minute, and I think I'm going to go with the red church costume because there was so much storytelling in it that I loved the fact that she was like, 
really over this entire weekend. She's pissed. She wore a red coat to church, which is like crazy. But yet she's still wearing the black veil, almost like she's hiding from the public, almost like she's in mourning for like her life. So yeah, I love that costume. That's definitely my choice. I have to say that was like on the list, but I had to go with the Christmas dinner ball gown. Just like the work that went into it. Like this is the costume all the other ones are like building up to. Just like how constrained it is, but how beautiful and like just girly it is. And just like these two conflicting sides of her coming together in this one look. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful dress. And it's definitely, if it's not my number one, it's my number two. <laughs> it's really good. Exactly. That is my choice. But Spencer... It's not up to us, is it? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> kind of. But we would love to hear all of you guys. What is your one costume to rule them all? We're going to post. Obviously, we're going to be posting on Instagram all week long. We're going to put a couple polls up on our Instagram stories. Make sure you vote for your favorite costume. Let us know what your one costume to rule them all is. Yeah. Let us know which costume ruled this movie. Spencer, do you want to talk about next week i am so excited for next week uh we are going to be watching the very spooky very costumey film by guillermo del toro one of our personal favorites yes nightmare alley featuring bradley cooper and the one the only kate blanchett Ugh. And we might have a special guest join us next week. so We might. So make sure you tune in. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I'm so excited to be back. Uh, season two is going to be amazing. We have a full calendar full of great, great, great content coming. So I've just, I'm so excited to do this. And I missed you, Elizabeth. And Daniel, I miss you too. You're in the studio. But this is awesome. I'm so excited. I missed you guys, too. I'm so excited to be back. Everyone, have a wonderful week. Can't wait to see you next time. We're not seeing you, though. (laughs) You're listening to us. I can't wait for you to listen to us. (laughs) I also cannot wait for you to listen to us. (laughs) Everyone, have a wonderful week. (laughs) Bye. The Art of Costume Blogcast is hosted and produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams. Our audio engineering and editing is done by Dan White. Follow us on Instagram at The Art of Costume Pod or visit theartofcostumeblogcast.com for all blogcast updates. If you want to support the show, go to theartofcostume.com slash podstore or you can head over to patreon.com slash theartofcostume for some bonus content. For more costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, head over to theartofcostume.com, a blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design. <laughs> right, like they're sitting in the, the portrait. Oh, Spencer, and like, I've lost you. You are frozen in time and space. I'm all Am alone now. Not quite sure what to do. Am I back yet? Mm. Am I back now? Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> You're back now. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> Can anybody hear me? <laughs> I was trying (laughs) to talk about Princess Margaret. (laughs) Uh, Continue talking about Princess Margaret.